Hare Krishna. So I thought that today evening we will discuss the some aspects of the glorious life of His Grace Pankajangri Prabhuji. For uh, those that may not know, and I will share a little bit more, but uh, for some reason I was very, very affected uh, by his departure. Um, he is a great saintly person um, that, you know, one of the most saintly persons, just by looking at him, I could, I feel that he is, uh, I just had a lot of attachment for him. So I thought, uh, uh, you know, we'll just discuss something about his, from his life. So as you can, can you all see the sharing? So, yes. yeah. So um, now before we get started, I just want to mention that uh, one of the aspects that we will be covering today will be the departure of devotees. Uh, what is the meaning of when de devotees and that to such exalted, such wonderful devotees of the Lord depart from our midst? They don't die, of course, uh, but it is just the separation that becomes uh, heavy for devotees to tolerate. So, um, and there is, um, and we will be discussing about his departure from our midst. We will be seeing some pictures, some videos, etc., which some parents may consider unsuitable for their children. So I hope all the parents that are listening here, I know at least uh, three parents of, of young, younger children here present. So I, I ask you to exercise your discretion as to you know, what you want to, your children to see and hear. I personally have absolutely no problems. Now my children are grown up, they are teenagers and older side of teenagers, 16 and 18, or almost 18. But even if they were very young, even if they were five or, or even younger, I would not have a problem personally with having them to see what a departure of a great Vaishnava is or looks like. Everybody has to depart and sharing with them the reality of life is, uh, is I would say is desirable, is beneficial, but parents uh, you know, are the best judges and I'll let you decide. Uh, so before we uh, discuss or you know just try to understand the glorious life of his grace pankajangri prabhuji i i felt personally it is important to understand his service a devotee is always defi defined by his devotion and his service Devotional service is devotional, devotion plus service. So, uh, and to understand his service, we must understand Sridham Mayapur. What is the, which is the place where he served? So, Sridham Mayapur, that's how it is called, Sridham that means the holy place. Um, 
the most auspicious holy place of the Lord. Mayapur is the place, the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was appeared about 500 years ago as the son of Sri Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi Mata. And he was born, uh, and this larger area is known as Navadweep. It's in West Bengal, today's West Bengal. And about three hours drive, according to Indian road conditions, uh, north of Calcutta. And uh, it is uh, a group of nine islands, that's why it is called Navadweep separated by the various tributaries of the Ganges or the Ganga River. The Ganga River is beginning to form a massive delta. It's known as the world's largest delta and uh, branches out into many, many, many uh, uh, smaller rivers or streams and then they form these nine islands. And the center of that is Mayapur where Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, who is the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada, uh, built a very big temple at the very exact spot where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born. And that is known as Yogapit. Very nice temple is there. And also there is the Neem tree under which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born. That's why he's called Nimai. And about, um, I would say one, one and a half miles, maybe two kilometers uh, from there is the temple that was constructed under the uh, guidance, under the vision of Srila Prabhupada. The temple construction had begun and the temple was, I mean, a large part of the temple was already there during Srila Prabhupada's, was, was constructed and made ready during Srila Prabhupada's time. And then it was further expanded uh, after the departure of Srila Prabhupada in 1977. And today, Sridham Mayapur serves as the world headquarters of ISKCON. That is the, the place, the central place Srila Prabhupada wanted the world headquarters of ISKCON to be in Sridham, Mayapur. So uh, that's what, uh, that's the significance of Sridham, Mayapur as the birthplace of none other than Lord Krishna in the Chaitanya Leela as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, the birthplace of Lord Krishna is Mathura uh, during his appearance 5,000 years ago, but as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he appeared in Sri Dham Mayapur. And a uh, couple of hundred years ago, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who is another great, great Acharya in our parampara, had predicted that there will be an Adbhut Mandir. Adbhut means uh, Mm, a out of the world, I would say, or a just a, what would be a better translation of Adbhut? Magnificent. Mirac miraculous, huh? What's that? M magnificent. Magnificent, miraculous, wonderful, out of the world, whatever, you know. And Adbhut Mandir will manifest in Sridham Mayapur. And Srila Prabhupada uh, wanted to build a huge temple and he laid the foundation for that temple before he departed from this world. And so we'll go to the next slide here. So this is how, this is a real image of how the temple is looking today. And it is still under construction and few more years before it gets completed. And you can see the Ganges River towards your right hand side on the picture. 
and a beautiful, wonderful temple coming up, basically in the middle of nowhere, so to say. You can see all rice paddy fields and, uh, uh, you know, all around. And this is the temple. And so the disciples of Srila Prabhupada are, are fulfilling that vision or that prophecy of Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur. And this is the ISKCON's world headquarters. This is uh, another picture of an artist, artist rendition of the temple. This was ob obviously uh, uh, drawn before the construction started, but you can see from the previous picture how how it's manifest, how it's beginning to manifest through the wonderful efforts, and of course, building a temple needs money. Uh, through the efforts of many, many, many devotees, and most significantly through the leadership and contribution, financial as well as leadership contribution by Ambarish Prabhuji. He is uh, none other than Alfred Ford, the great grandson of Henry Ford, of the Ford Motor Company. So, uh, and you can see sort of the uh, magnitude or the sort of the thing you can see little cars or trucks here that's that's how huge this temple is so this is an artist's rendition of this wonderful temple and now we will go inside the temple now the temple is not yet fully constructed i'll go back to the picture so you can see over here this is now we visited Sridham Mayapur in 2013 or 2014 last. So it's been about eight years. Uh, this is uh, Lotus Bhavan or the, and one is Chakra Bhavan, Chakra building and Lotus building. And this is the Gada Bhavan, I think. I'm, I, I may be mixing up the names, but the temple currently is mainly these over here in this area where I'm moving my mouse. And the deities are currently presiding in the middle. There is the temple hall, which is right in the middle over here. And this temple is being constructed in the, what used to be the sort of the grounds, the, the sort of the open space. So let's go inside now. So currently the deities are residing inside the old sort of the, or the current temple, which will in future become the old temple. So these are the most wonderful Shri Shri Radha Madhavji. And uh, uh, they are the, now it's hard to say who are the presiding deities, uh, but there are two huge altars in the temple. One is the altar of Shri Shri Radha Madhavji. Uh, and the other is the altar of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, being the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll go forward. So it's not just Sri Sri Radha Madhavji, but the altar is basically including the eight principal Sakhis, the Ashta Sakhis. So they are uh, the presiding deities, so to say. And of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Panchatattva also are the presiding deities. So these are also Shri Shri Madhar Adha Madhavji along with the Ashta Sakhis in their night dress. On a recent day, I got these pictures off of Facebook recently. So I'm presuming they are one of the recent darshan of the Lordships. And then Next to the altar or close by is the altar of Sri Narsingadev. Very, very beautiful altar, very beautiful, very wonderful deity of Sri Narsingadev. And there's a little story about that, which I will share in brief a little later. Um, but this is the altar of Sri Narsingadev. And this is where Pankajangri Prabhuji comes in. 
because he was the principal or the head priest of Lord Narsinghadev. And uh, his twin brother, His Grace Jananivas Prabhuji, uh, is the head pujari or the head priest of the other altars. And of course, the distinction or the head or this or that carries doesn't carry much meaning. But the these two twin brothers were serving were the head priests and they were they were uh, they trained hundreds and hundreds of other priests pujaris who were you know the whole team there's a huge team of pujaris of vaishnavas pujari vaishnavas who are serving the deities uh, under the guidance of jananivas prabhuji and pankajangri prabhuji and these two twin brothers were instructed directly by Srila Prabhupada to go and serve as the priests in the Mayapur temple. They were the first two priests directly appointed by Srila Prabhupada. We'll come to that. So this is the altar of, or this is Sri Narsingadev in Mayapur Dham. And here is another picture a slightly zoomed out picture of Sri Narsingadev. And towards the side here, you can see, who is this on the side? Little deity of anybody? Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, yes. Can't be anybody else. Next to Narsingadev, you will always see Prahlad Maharaj. Just like near Lord Ram, you will always see Hanumanji. Next to Lord Narsingadev, you always see Prahlad Maharaj. So that's another picture. And here is sort of the full picture, very beautiful, of uh, Narsingadev. And the full altar is visible, very beautifully decorated uh, with wonderful flowers, etc. So now, one peculiar thing that you see here in this altar is that, or not in this altar, but the deity of Narsingadev at Sri Dham Mayapur in the Iskon Mayapur temple is that Lord Narsingadev is in the angry mood. Therefore, he is called as Ugra Narsingha. You can see his eyes. Let me see. There's another picture I have, but I think here you can see in this picture that his eyes are red and his mouth is open in, uh, you know, as if he's about to, you know, eat somebody <laughs> and his hands are like this, about to, you know, catch Hiranyakashipu. So, and he also has these beautiful nails. Mm -hmm. You can see nails on his fingers. So, you know, very, very beautiful appearance of Lord Narsingadev. So, Pankajangri Prabhuji was the chief or the head priest of Lord Narsingadev. And then comes the uh, other altar, the main altar of the temple, which is that of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Panchatattva. Huge altar. Now, from this picture, I think I have a picture. No, I don't. Um, to give sort of the perspective, but these are, this is a huge altar. Each of the deities are almost 10 feet tall. Very tall, very big deities of the Panchatattva. So we see Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasa Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. So we see these five uh, personalities here, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, Lord Gadadhara, Advaita Acharya and Shri Vas Thakur. 
Now, interestingly, um, the in when these deities will be shifted to the main uh, or the new temple, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Panchatattva, these same deities will will be will be escorted or carried and uh, will take their place in the big, you know, it's going to be a 10 times bigger hall. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Panchatattva altar will be in the center. There'll be three altars. And on the one side will be Sri Sri Radha Madhavji with the Ashtasakhis. And there's a new altar being constructed on the other side of the six Goswamis. That's so wonderful. I can't wait to see that new altar. Those deities are being, are manifesting as we speak. And Lord Narsinghadev will have his altar on the side. So there'll be four altars compared to currently three altars. Anyway, so this is the magnificent altar of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then about three or four kilometers away, there is another temple of Lord Jagannath. And that is in a place called Rajapur. And uh, that, that's where Lord Jagannath resides. Uh, and uh, this temple is also taken care by devotees of ISKCON. So this is, we see Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev and Mother Subhadra. So now we come to Pankajangri Prabhuji, who departed a few days back, two day, three days back, in fact. So this is uh, His Grace Pankajangri Prabhuji. And um, I just wanted to read this letter and I'm looking to this side in the video because you know my I have two screens and the screen that I'm sharing is on this side. So my neck is facing this side when I'm looking at the screen. So um, this came out today and um, from the directors of the temple and the head director is His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj, who is a very, very wonderful, very sweet, very honorable and, and just a magnificent disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And um, I had the fortune of serving him for a few days, uh, but I'll share that story sometime later. And I was deeply touched by his humility and his devotion. So as you can see below, and there are other directors as well, but I, there wasn't enough space to add everybody's name. So I just left it at, as His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami's name there. And I would like somebody to read this letter. So in a very devotional, humble, and calm mood, would somebody like to read it, an adult? But you can read Prabhu with permission. Absolutely, please. From Sri Mayapur Dham directors. Dear devotees and friends of Iskon Mayapur, the loss of Pankajangri Prabhu has saddened the hearts of devotees worldwide. Janan Nivas and Pankajangri Prabhus are the two of the brightest gems in Iskon. Sri Prabhupada has said, Vrindavan is my home, Mayapur is my place of worship, and Bombay is my office. Janinivas and Pankajangri Prabhus, being the embodiment of Srila Prabhupada's worship, are rightly known as the heart of Mayapur. Their unalloyed and uninterrupted service and dedication to Srila Prabhupada makes them worthy of veneration by devotees across the globe. Mayapur is more than a geographical location. It is the home of every devotee who serves Srila Prabhupada's mission to spread the holy name of Krishna to every town and village, a mission that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own. For every person who has entered the gates of Iskon Mayapur and had the association of Pankajangri Prabhu, his departure is heartbreaking. 
he is truly irreplaceable our pain is magnified by the thought of the separation being experienced by janani vasco the wave of love from all corners of the world is felt in mayapur and we are dependent on this love to heal the heart of janani vasco to write off pankajangri prabhu means to write off janani vas prabhu also they are inseparable appearing in the same womb always together their lives dedicated to shri prabhupad's worship of shri shri radha madhav shri shri panchatatva and shri prahlad narsimha dev as dinabandhu prabhu wrote i will miss this dear god brother like anything these two brothers are mayapur personified for me like mayapur itself pankajangri prabhu is related to and loved by all he touched the lives of everyone in iskon it is natural that our hearts are broken by this sudden and incomparable loss and we offer our condolences to all devotees pankajangri prabhu is profoundly missed by us and we pray that when our service is complete we may be reunited in the iskon within the spiritual world all glory to shri prabhupad's dear servant his case pankajangri prabhu the servants is kanmayapur co directors jayapatak swami so thank you prabhu thank you for such wonderful reading so as you can see to for those who may not know his grace pankajangri prabhu ji it is so important to understand shri dham mayapur the significance of shri dham mayapur so that one can understand that the heart of shri dham mayapur are these two twin brothers as a very very wonderful disciple of shri prabhupad whom again you know i've had the chance of hearing from live many times he resides in vrindavan for many many decades now dinabandhu prabhu ji and uh, you know he has said it so nicely and so aptly i will miss this dear god brother like anything these two brothers are mayapur personified for me that's true for so many devotees who know mayapur and who know these two wonderful hearts these gems these jewels of iskon residing in the heart of shri mayapur dham as has been written here by jayapataka maharaj and others jananivas prabhu ji and pankajangi prabhu ji are the two brightest gems in iskon when i see them they are like saint they are saints in the modern day just their their saintliness just shines from from their entire existence from their being and they are embodiment of shila prabhupad's worship and are thus rightly known as the heart of mayapur and that is who we lost one of them they uh came to iskon somewhere in the early 1970s 71 72 or something like that janinivas prabhu ji came like a year earlier than pankajangri prabhu ji and then he kind of became um initiated and started serving full time somewhere in 1972 73 and immediately shrila prabhupad ordered both of them to go to shri dham mayapur and take charge of the of worshiping the deities at the temple that was still being constructed such was the vision of shrila prabhupad he always used to think 2 3 years ahead when there will be the temple then there will be deities and then we will need somebody to worship them so you go right now so he ordered them to go there so that they can be part of the whole uh construction and the whole decision making and everything and arranging the worship of the deities you cannot have the deities come first and then the pujaris come later so and they immediately went to mayapur dham and jananivas prabhu ji says that he never left mayapur after that 
that was a one way journey and he never ever left now there's a small caveat to that which i will share later but once he went there he never came back they were born in england so they are they are british so to say of british origin or descent but once they went to shridham mayapur they never set their foot outside india they traveled to many places to vrindavan to many other places but they never set foot outside india and till date they have been serving just magnificently the deities of shri shri radha madhav panchatatva and shri prahlad narsingh dev ji and uh, by the loss of pankajangri prabhu ji the one who is must be the most affected is his dear twin brother jananivas prabhu ji one cannot even begin to imagine his loss and the feeling of separation that he must be going through they have been together since they were conceived in the womb you know only twins can say that and you know now comes the time of separation and very wonderfully jay pataka maharaj has said that we pray that when our service is completed we may be reunited in the iskon within the spiritual world so of course there is a iskon in the spiritual world as well where shila prabhupad is serving and we all hope that sometime when we are successful after our completion of devotional service we can go there and join shila prabhupad just like pankajangri prabhu ji has most definitely joined him already so that is uh pankajangri prabhu ji i have a whole series of pictures just to remember him over the last few days ever since i got this news i was tracking sort of on facebook and other places of his health and i have not been able to do any much work after his departure and all these memories and other things i have been looking at so i collected a few pictures and few just few things to share and i hope you will you know it will be a good uh, walk down memory lane to remember the glorious life of pankajangri prabhu ji and as you will see his life is inseparable from the life of jananivas prabhu ji so okay so then i put this picture here and i wanted to put some text below that title lord narsingh dev comes to mayapur but i couldn't find suitable text to put in there like uh brief enough that would fit in the space however i found this picture which i had never seen before and this is the same lord narsingh dev which we saw in the previous slides over over here same same deity of lord narsingh dev is here and of course his eyes are closed uh, a, a cloth is tied around his eyes which means he's coming into the temple for the first time and after the big ceremony that takes place over like several days then the eyes are opened and and so on so a uh, very very you know memorable picture and uh, i cannot see if there is jananivas prabhu ji or pankajangri prabhu ji anywhere in this picture it's hard to kind of uh, make out faces especially when they were so young at that time but anyway the, there's a beautiful story about the appearance of lord narsingh dev in shridham mayapur and i have shared this story a few times actually i remember in various temple classes and there is not enough time to share it again today but we will share it some other time and it has been detailed in one of the back to godhead magazines from the 1980s that's where i took it from and it the brief summary is that you know like you can see mayapur is sort of from the modern sense it's in the middle of nowhere it's in a very very remote area 
of West Bengal. From the spiritual standpoint, it's the downtown. It's the hub of the spiritual world in the material sense or, you know, in the material world, it's the hub for spiritual activity. It's the downtown or the most important place, the headquarters, as you can see. But from the material standpoint, it's, uh, you know, nowhere. And there are decoits, there are miscreants in such places. And uh, once the temple construction was over and the deities had been, the deities of Lord <coughs> Krishna uh, had arrived, Sri Sri Radha Madhavji, the decoits were at one time attacked the temple. And uh, the devotees very fiercely protected the deities and protected the temple. And there was like, you know, even gunshots were fired and devotees got injured and, and things like that. And uh, then the question became, what's a permanent solution to this uh, menace? And then the devotees, and this was after Srila Prabhupada had departed sometime in the 80s. So Lord Narsingadev was not there in the temple in the beginning. Uh, when it was constructed in the 70s. So after this attack, and I think multiple attacks occurred like this, not just once. And uh, the devotees sat down and discussed what is a permanent solution. And one of the solution that was brought up was to invite uh, Lord Narsinghadev to come to the temple and take his place. And wherever there is Lord Narsinghadev, the devotees are protected. Lord Narsinghadev is the supreme protector. And the devotees gave an example that when Yogapit was uh, constructed, remember Yogapit temple, which is a little bit away from the Iskon temple, which is at the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, attacks used to occur there also. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj was present at that time. And he said, invite Narsinghadev over there and when Narsinghadev was invited over there, the attacks stopped. So the same solution was adopted over here as well. And the idea was to invite a fierce form of Narsinghadev. So that, you know, a form of Narsinghadev where he is ready to pounce on the decoits if they attack. You know, so all fully armed with his nails Lord Narsinghadev doesn't have any other weapons other than his teeth and his nails. Though those are his transcendental weapons, by which he uh, killed the you know biggest demon, Hiranyakashipu. So, that is known as the form of Ugra Narsingha. And uh, the story, again, in very brief, is that you know. Um, um, manifesting such a deity from stone or whichever element, and this deity is made of stone, is not an easy task. Uh, those who are the uh, devotees, the Vaishnavas who carve or who manifest such deities don't manifest Ugra Narsingha. Shanta Narsingha, which means in a peaceful uh, form, after he has been pacified by Prahlad Maharaj, that is no problem. So many Vaishnava devotees would be ready to carve or manifest such a deity, but Ugra Narsingha is considered to be very, very, only very um, elevated devotees under very, very special care should carve or should manifest such deities. And after a huge amount of search, and long story short, uh, they found. Uh, you know, a devotee, a Vaishnava devotee from the Sri Sampradaya who was ready to make such a deity. And um, first he was not ready and he went and took permission from his guru. And his guru first rejected, oh, you should never do that. It's very, very dangerous. And uh, later on, when he heard that Iskon is the one that is requesting this deity and he, his guru knew that because the thing is, if this form of Lord Narsinghadev appears in a temple, he has to be worshipped very, very carefully. If there is any fault in the worship, of course, the temple and everybody, including the one who manifested or carved the deity, will get a reaction. But his guru said, no, ISKCON 
devotees will take very good care will worship the deity very nicely so don't worry you go ahead he went ahead and made a you know manifested the deity like that and that's how he arrived into this con mayapur and after that there were no decoy attacks till today everything is peaceful so that is the mercy of shri narsingh dev and the point is his grace pankajangri prabhu is the head priest of the worship of lord narsingh dev so he is the one so when they were debating even the iskon devotees were thinking who will worship him we need a very very strong person strong means not strong by physical strength but spiritual strength who will follow his sadhana his devotional practices perfectly will really lead the life of a devotee of a vaishnava in the true sense so that the worship of lord narsingh dev happens properly and pankajangri prabhu volunteered i will do it and everybody agreed that yes he is the perfect man to do it and one of the requirements was such a person should be a celibate from birth so of course he was you know a brahmachari and he took a vow of celibacy and of course jananivas prabhu as well but you know very very high extremely high and extremely strict standards of worship need to be maintained of lord narsingh dev and pankajangri prabhu stood up or, or or you know stepped forward and did that wonderfully since the early 70s till till today for almost 50 years i am not even 50 years old my age itself is not that much as long as he has been serving narsingh dev so it's just amazing what a life of service to lord narsingh dev by pankajangri prabhu ji so that is lord narsingh dev appearing in shri dham mayapur this is now just some pictures that i liked just some i i picked those pictures and i put them in slides you know we can just see these pictures we can meditate on pankajangri prabhu ji i hope you have some familiarity now those of you that may not know as to who he is what a great what a elevated vaishnava he is and you can you can uh, you know just hope that in some future like i can hope that in some future lifetime i can be a fraction or i can have a fraction of devotion like he had now by the way the leftmost picture is of jananivas prabhu ji now one of the interesting things is that they were twin brothers they are twin brothers they will they are spiritually twin brothers and they are the twins who look alike there are some twins who don't look alike that is possible uh, i have two nieces myself uh, who are twins but they don't look alike so there are look alike and non look alike so they are look alike twin brothers so therefore jananivas prabhu ji always wears a watch because it's very hard for everybody to figure out who's who so jananivas prabhu ji wears a watch and that's how everybody can know he is jananivas prabhu ji and pankaj hanri prabhu ji does not wear a watch <laughs> so uh, this is jananivas prabhu ji mourning the passing grieving on the departure of his dear brother real brother god brother whatever material level spiritual level brother in all respects and this is pankaj hanri prabhu ji absorbed in meditation in japa and here also we see pankajangri prabhu ji so and here are some previous pictures you know these are the two twins in london in england of course many years before they came in contact with shri la prabhupad and you know and these are the picture this is a picture and these are pictures that i only saw i had seen many many pictures of them but i think only due to the departure now these pictures are being posted in memory 
of as a tribute or as a glorification so you know i saw these wonderful pictures they're so young and beautiful uh i can't guess but maybe they're in their 20s or 30s or whatever but you know when probably they started and this is another picture a little bit younger but again and as you can see here the one with the watch is jananivas prabhu ji and this one is pankajanvi prabhu ji so again you know these are just visual treats have a look meditate on them and from my personal viewpoint i just hope and pray that in a future lifetime i can become a fraction of who they are today another picture you know i don't know when these were taken but uh the saintliness the devotion just is so apparent by looking at them their simplicity their uh internal happiness is just so nice so another couple of pictures now this is a picture of pankajangri prabhu ji talking with his holiness jayapataka maharaj jayapataka maharaj is another wonderful wonderful disciple of shri laprabhupad and was instrumental and is still instrumental in the huge expansion and all the you know various expansion projects um the whole congregational development the entire concept of bhakti vrikshas which is what we are doing right now and the preaching uh, you know aspects and uh, is is all a sort of a brainchild of jayapataka maharaj and um so we see him and you know two wonderful personalities talking to each other i wish i knew what they are talking about i'm sure they are talking something about krishna <laughs> but what it is i don't know and of course this is before his holiness jayapataka maharaj suffered the stroke he was so nice and you know well built and you know a uh, strong devotee you know strong from externally and internally both but um, several years ago he suffered a stroke unfortunately and uh, but his uh, internal strength has not reduced it, it, if if at all it has only increased <laughs> his vigor and his uh, determination to spread lord krishna's message that can never suffer a stroke so it can suffer strokes strokes of krishna's mercy strokes of krishna's blessings by which it only increases nothing reduces not the physical kind of disease stroke now here you can see the two brothers I honestly don't know who is who because I can't see the watch but one of them is certainly Pankajangri Prabhu and I can tell you 100% the other one is Jananivas Prabhu so on the right is Pankajangri Prabhu okay <laughs> wonderful with the cross on top of the cross so yeah narottam vilas prabhu ji says the one on the right is pankajangri prabhu so of course he um no we will we'll, we we get that realization through him thank you okay and this is again 
Pankajan Gri Prabhu just absorbed in Kirtan, in Japa, in worshipping the Lord. There is a very wonderful video which I probably won't have time to show of uh, now Pankajangri Prabhu used to take part in a lot of dramas. Now I have one picture where he is dressed as Advaita Acharya, very funny picture. And there was another video where he was uh, acting like Narshingadev. And it was the fighting sequence with Hiranyakashipu. And he was jumping like really high. He's, I mean, he, and this is during one of the older time when he's old, old as in materially, bodily. Uh, and he was jumping, even I cannot jump or, or, you know, as a younger person, he was so full of enthusiasm. He was jumping from one spot to the other, you know, as if he's fighting with uh, Narshingadev, uh, with uh, Hiranyakashipu. And uh, there was another devotee who was posing as Hiranyakashipu and there was that match, sort of fighting match going on and they were like jumping from here to there to there. It was so nice. And there was also a little clip of His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj watching and laughing. So that was, yeah. So it's not just devotion in terms of just being absorbed in japa, absorbed in meditation, absorbed in thinking of the self or something like that. It's, it's devotional service in all respects, including dancing and jumping for Krishna. Here we see um, Prabhuji taking darshan of Lord Narsingadev. And here are some more pictures of Prabhuji. Just every single picture, his his devotion, I feel, and his his saintliness, his his a true Vaishnava can be seen in any of his pictures. And on the right hand side in the background here, you will see his holiness Sachinandan Maharaj, who is a very wonderful disciple of Srila Prabhupada and a wonderful Kirtan singer. He's chanting the holy name. And Pankajangri Prabhuji is relishing the holy name. Ah, and here is the picture of Pankajangri Prabhuji dressed as uh, Advaita Acharya. You can see with the big white beard and hair and all that. Now here we see Pankajangri Prabhuji worshipping, directly worshipping Lord Narsingadev on the altar. Here, as you can see, Lord Narsingadev is made out of black stone, but here the face is not black. So here it has been covered with sandalwood. So the, you know, there's the sandalwood festival, the Chandan Yatra festival, when all the deities are smeared with sandalwood paste. So that's what is going on here. And this is just a, another picture of the two brothers. Absorbed in meditation or Krishna Katha or Kirtan. There's a video that I'd like to show, a video on a boat. I hope the sound comes through. Very, very beautiful video. So if somebody can tell me that the sound is coming through, then that will be nice. Wait. Hmm. 
This is a one less than one minute video, as you can see, 49 seconds. Uh, can you hear me? Is my audio coming? Yes. yes. Okay. And when I play, uh, can somebody confirm you can hear the audio of the of the video clip? And can you see the video clip reasonably also? Please let me know. Can you hear the audio of the clip? Yes. Yes? Okay, let me start again. So just if just I, I'll start it again, sorry for the multiple back and forth, but this is this video is just very I found it very, very, very sweet of the two brothers. His Grace Pankajangri Prabhuji and Jananivas Prabhuji on a boat and they often would go on a boat to go from one place to the other like boats are a common mode of transport in Mayapur across to cross the Ganges River and how they are absorbed in reading something, I, I don't know what they are reading, uh, but they're just completely absorbed and there'll be another thing, another piece you will see how they're absorbed in Japa in chanting the holy name and uh, just very amazing. Uh, their devotion hopefully can, can, can be seen through the audio and video. So, yeah. That was the boat video. And let's see what is next. I don't know what are the other slides I have. Ah, so this is the portion that's coming up, which is uh, now going to go into his departure. So this is the part which I had said, you know, if, if you don't want your children to see, that's fine. I personally see no, I think this is, you know, seeing the departure of great Vaishnavas like him is a blessing, is not something that we should uh, shield our children from. Everybody has to pass one day or the other. So like we see life, we should also be exposed to death. And of course, this is the passing of a great Vaishnava, great Vaishnava. So this is the moment of celebration to celebrate their devotion and to look at our own life and see how we can lead our life that can be a small tiny fraction of how they lived their life. So here is the body of Pankajanuri Prabhuji. After his uh, soul departed and went on to serve Lord Krishna and Srila Prabhupada in the spiritual world. We can get a slight darshan of his feet here. So... Uh, zoomed out picture. So this is the courtyard of the main temple hall, the current one.
I think over here might be Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj. I think there's another picture of him in the close-up. Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj is another wonderful Vaishnava. Very, very realized. Has so many realizations, deep realizations of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. He is a disciple of Jai Pataka Maharaj. And Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj is also very, very deeply involved in making sure that the Iskon Mayapur temple is running properly. And this from a distance is none other than His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj taking the last darshan of Pankajangri Prabhuji from the balcony from you know of course he's uh, suffered a stroke and 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 many other things so he's under very high risk at a material level of course he's under the protection devotees are always under the protection of the lord whether they are in one body or another body that's immaterial the lord is always protecting devotees so devotees are always protected but still at the material level precautions need to be taken So he's taking the last darshan of Pankajanri Prabhuji. This is another very, very heart-wrenching video. Soon after the departure of Pankajanri Prabhuji, it's 33 minutes long, 35 minutes long or 34 minutes. We'll just watch the last one minute. How Jananivas Prabhuji, when he comes after the departure of his dear brother, pays obeisances to his brother and then leaves. I was very touched by that scene. So I thought I'll share it with all of you as well. So we'll watch just the last one minute of it. Is the audio coming through? Somebody can confirm? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll move forward. So here is the departed, the, bo the body of Pankit Kangit Prabhuji. I'll go to the last, yeah. So very nicely, whoever is taking the video has focused on the feet of Pankit Kangit Prabhuji. You can take darshan of his feet. And uh, we will see soon after Janani Prabhuji arrives and pays his obeisances to him. Okay, so that video ended. This is a very, very wonderful tribute written by a very, another very, very sweet Vaishnava by the name of Madhavananda Prabhuji. And um, he is also, you know, wonderful Vaishnava. And uh, yeah, of course, we can share his glories as well, uh, but we're running out of time. But 
um, he's the one, he's the chief editor. I mean, one of the things, but uh, of, of a fortnightly magazine, a four page, five page magazine, not too big, uh, called Krishna Kathamrita Bindu. It comes out on every Ekadashi, religiously on every Ekadashi it comes out. And it has just some extremely wonderful articles, wonderful things. Uh, you know, you should you should make it a point to, if you if possible, read that Krishna Kathamrita Bindu. And in the modern sense, we call it KK Bindu, but the full name is Krishna Kathamrita Bindu. And he's the editor. He collects the materials and uh, puts it in that. And uh, uh, one of the other main contributors of that is His Grace Hari Parshad Prabhuji, whom I adore and respect very much. And some of you may have heard his name, some of you not. Uh, but those of you who have, I'm sure, have great respect for Hari Parshad Prabhuji as well. So Madhavananda Prabhuji is uh, the editor of that Krishna Kathamrita Bindu. That's how I came to know about him. And I respect him immensely. Would somebody like to read this wonderful tribute? He has written some very nice points, extremely instructive. Would somebody like to read it uh, again in a devotional and you know heartful way, an adult? And when I say adult, I could mean older teenagers as well, but in a very devotional way, if please try to read anyone. Come on, it's not that hard. Narutam Vilas Prabhuji, would you like to read it again? Absolutely, Prabhu. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity, Prabhu. Tribute by His Grace Madhavanand Prabhuji. I don't lament for Pankajangri Prabhu. He spent a lifetime of dedicated and intimate service to the deities in the Dham. He clearly, deeply pleased his spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. He left in Mayapur Dham, just behind the deities of the Panchatattva, surrounded by devotees chanting the holy name, while thousands of devotees all over the world were chanting and praying for him. It doesn't get much be be better than that. The famous saying comes to mind, Jeeva va Marava. For a saintly person, living or dying is the same. They are serving Krishna in this life, and after their departure, they will continue serving. Rather, at this time, my concern goes to the devotees who are still here and have to undergo the pain of separation from such an exalted personality. As Ramananda Roy told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Bhakta Virahavina Dukha Nahi Dekhi Para Aside from separation from the devotee of Krishna, I know of no unbearable unhappiness. Sri Prabhupada's disciple, Jagadatma Prabhu, once asked Shri God Govind Maharaj, you speak so much about how we should feel separation and cry for Krishna. But how can we cry and feel separation if we have never seen Krishna? To which Maharaj replied, when I leave, then you will be able to cry. Now in the separation from Pangajangri Prabhu, we are learning to cry for Krishna. In separation from the devotees we have, in separation from the devotees, we have a Viraha Utsav. It is an Utsav, festival for the residents of the spiritual world. But for those of us who stay behind, it is a Viraha, separation. For us, it is a festival of tears instead of flowers. But our crying is not for the great soul. Our crying is in sadness that we have lost their Sangha. As Srila Narottam Das Thakur has sung, Unable to obtain this association, Narottam Das simply weeps. My humble pranams to the great soul Pankajangri Prabhu, 
I pray not for his benefit, rather I pray that he may bless me with even a drop of the same determination and devotion to serve that he showed with his life. Shipat Pankajangir Prabhu Ki Jai. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for such a heartful reading. Yeah, so again, you know, these great Vaishnavas, they don't live and they don't die. They just serve Lord Krishna wherever they are. That's their only job. And they do it perfectly wherever they are, deputed by Lord Krishna in this world, in some other world or in the spiritual world. And when they go back to the spiritual world, it's a festival like a, you know, for all those who are in the spiritual world, Srila Prabhupada must be so happy right now to have him back with him. It's just we who feel separation from him. So wonderfully said by Madhavananda Prabhuji. And that, especially that question that somebody asked Jagat Atma Prabhuji to Gaur Govinda Maharaj, how can we weep for Krishna? That's very true in my case. I have no weeping, no separation from Krishna. I don't feel that. But our separation from devotees is much stronger. We feel that. And in that way, the devotees teach us how to feel separation from Krishna. As Madhavananda Prabhuji has written, now in the separation from Pankajaganari Prabhu, we are learning to cry for Krishna. So even in their leaving, they are teaching us something to learn to cry for Krishna. So I want to show another video but before that video, I just want to, this is a very, very famous song of separation of which the last line was written here. Se sanga na paya kande das. And that's the last line of this song here. Se sanga na paya kande, na paya kande das. So this is five stanzas. We'll quickly go over these and those who are familiar with the Bengali language should be able to understand this very easily. But this is a song of separation written by, written by none other than Srila Narutam Das Thakur, who is another magnificent, wonderful Acharya in our disciplic succession. And uh, his songs are said to be directly from the transcendental world, from the spiritual world. And this is a song in which he is specifically lamenting. This is a song of separation, basically, where Narutam Das Thakur is lamenting his separation from various devotees. So just a quick, uh, this thing, Narutam Das Thakur appeared a little bit after the departure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by the time he grew up and all, a lot of the devotees, the close disciples and devotees of Lord Chaitanya had disappeared. And Narutam Das Thakur is just feeling extreme separation from all of them. And we will see many personalities that are named in this song. And uh, you can see his emotion, his uh, the state of his heart of Narutam Das Thakur, how he's like a, a fish out of water, how he's just uh, desperate. He is so uh, burning in separation from these devotees. And if the learning for us should be to develop that kind of attachment to devotees. There is no problem in attachments. The problem is only with material attachments. Attachments are great, as long as the attachments are of spiritual nature, with Krishna or with devotees of Krishna. So um, this is a song of separation due to his extreme attachment with the devotees of Krishna. So it starts with 
Jay Anilo, I cannot sing, uh, but but we will see a video after this, where this song is being sung in the background, and then there is a tribute or you know, a remembrance of Pankaj Gangri Prabhuji in the video. So that's why we are going through this song a little bit. You will hear this song very nicely sung in the background in that video. The audio of that video will be this song. Je Anilo Premadhana Karuna Prachur Heno Prabhu Potha Gela Acharya Thakur. So he's saying that Je Anilo Premadhana Karuna Prachur, which means his full Karuna means compassion, he's full with Karuna. J Anilo, which means the one, and here it is being talked about the devotees, the various devotees who did this. What did they do? They brought Anilo means to bring Prema Dhana, the wealth, the dhana of of uh, pray of uh, prema of love for Krishna. They brought that love to us, and they brought the compassion, Karuna, Karuna Prachur. They were. They brought Krishna's mercy to us through their own mercy. So where are they? Heno Prabhu Kotha Gela. Where have they gone? Acharya. And the first devotee that he is feeling separation from is Acharya Thakur or Srinivas Acharya. And then he is lamenting for other devotees who are no longer with him. Kaha Mora. Kaha means Kaha Gaya. Where have you gone? Kaha. Kaha Mora Swarupa Rupa Kaha Sanatan. So three devotees are being mentioned here. Swarupa. Swarupa is Swarup Damodar Goswami, who was the chief personal secretary of Lord Chaitanya himself. And then Kaha Mora Swarupa Rupa, that is Rupa Goswami, and Kaha Sanatana. Sanatana is Sanatan Goswami. Kaha Dasa Raghunath, that is Raghunath Das Goswami, Patita Pavan, who is. <coughs> Patita Pavan, which means the savior of the fallen souls. Kaha Mora Bhatta Juga. Bhatta Juga means the two Bhatta Goswamis, Gopal Bhatta and Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. Kaha Mora Bhatta Juga. Kaha Kaviraj. Kaviraj is Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who is the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Eka Kale Kotha Gela. Gora Nataraj. So Eka Kale Kothagela. Kotha means Kaha Kothagela in Bengali. Kothagela means Kothai Kothai Jaschin. Where are you going? So Kothagela, where did you where did he go? Eka Kale means at once he left. Gora Nataraj. Gora Nataraj. Who is the Gora Nataraj? Gora means um, fair complexion. Gora. Nataraj is the dancer who is the famous fair complexioned dancer, none other than Lord Chaitanya himself. He used to sing and dance. And he had such a fair golden complexion. So Kotha Gela Gora Eka Kale Kotha Gela Gora Nataraj. And then he says, due to this separation from all these wonderful personalities, what is he going to do? Pashane Kutibo Matha Anale Pasibo. Pashane Kutibo Matha means Pashane means a rock. Kutibo Matha. Matha means head. Kutibo means to break. Kut dunga. Kut means to I'll break you or I'll you know turn you into powder. So kutna. Pashane means to at, at the rock I will break my head. Anale pashibo. Pashibo means I will go and sit in the anale. Anale means fire. So bhumi rapo analo vayu. So that is the verse from Bhagavad Gita. Anal means fire. So I will go and sit in the fire. Gauranga gunera nidhi kotha gele pavo. So where can I find Lord Gauranga? Gauranga gunera nidhi kotha gele pavo. Where should I go and find the great wonderful qualities of Lord Gauranga? Sa sabe Sangira, Sange ye koilo vilas. That I'm because, or I'm unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga 
and all these other devotees because i am unable to do that say sab sangira sange je koilo vilas vilas means i am lamenting uh na paya kanda sa sange na paya kanda narot kande narottam das so kande means to weep so sa sanga na paye because i did not i cannot get this association of all these wonderful devotees i what the only thing i can do is weep so this is the strength of his emotion he's he's just feeling like a fish out of water and he is uh, such a desperate situation and that is the situation of devotees and especially that might might be the situation of jananivas prabhu as well who has had pankaj ganagri prabhu as his by his side ever since they were born or even before that so this is the iskon official video in the memory of his grace pankaj ganagri prabhu ji we will see this for the next 6 minutes and just relish the video and you will get a you know sort of a overview of his life you can hear the audio yes audio is coming yes bro yes one second i'll go back please read this this is very very wonderful quote by shri bhakti vinod thakur he reasons ill who tells that vaishnavas die when thou art living still in sound so through their sound by hearing from vaishnavas we can you know they are always alive for us the vaishnavas die to live and living try to spread the holy name around so this is the only job of the vaishnavas
Very wonderful. Okay. So there's another video. This is 30 minutes long. We won't watch the whole 30 minutes. I'll skip large parts of it, but this is the final journey of Pankaj Gangri Prabhuji. Just we'll spend maybe two minutes skipping through it quickly. Sri 
राधिका माधव पार मधुबल भाषा बंदे तुलसी चरणार बिंदन बंदे So here he is being he has been brought to the temple for darshan his last darshan Thank you. 
can take the last darshan of prabhu ji what a glorious passing such a wonderful passing so now to end, end on a happy note of course it is a as we said viraha utsava so you know we should celebrate the wonderful life of pankajangri prabhu ji and pray to the lord that we get a drop of mercy from from him so that we can try to make progress in our lives now his brother jananivas prabhu ji came to portland actually about 6 years ago in june 2015 and this is the part i was mentioning earlier that jananivas prabhu ji when he went to mayapur or to india he never came out of india he it was a one way journey to india except in 2015 he stepped out of india so it is said that 
he had taken two vows in his life that i will never leave india and i will never beg for money those were two vows that he had taken but this huge temple like we saw this huge temple of the vedic planetarium is being constructed and funds are needed for it so for the construction of the lord's temple he broke both of his vows he went on a world tour janani vas prabhu ji in 2015 and to to as a fundraising trip to raise funds for the construction of this magnificent temple of the vedic planetarium and he asked for money from devotees and from various people to contribute towards the construction of the temple so the two things that he had vowed he uh, broke both of the promises in service to lord krishna so that is the quality of a true vaishnava everything everything is for krishna's pleasure even one's vows can be broken for krishna's pleasure so i want to just show some pictures of janinivas prabhu ji's uh visit to portland we were so happy all the entire portland congregation was so happy to have janinivas prabhu ji come here so here we see him stepping off so and plus our family we got the great 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 fortune to host prabhu ji overnight he stayed here he blessed you know his his appear his presence in our house purified our whole house so he's stepping out of the car here and this is uh, the altar room in our house and being you know uh, janinivas prabhu ji is there <laughs> and uh, you know that is another devotee who arrived uh, along with him radha jeevan prabhu ji was also part of the fundraising team you can see my two kids are uh, young very much younger they look very different now and uh, and this is janani vas prabhu ji and this is our wonderful balani tai prabhu ji who is our temple's head pujari of our portland temple and he is uh, washing the feet of janani vas prabhu ji here Yeah, and uh, Balani Tai Prabhu ji spent six months in Mayapur uh, doing a course on uh, getting trained as a pujari within the as per the shastras and as per the standards of ISKCON. So, uh, and that whole um, uh, training program and everything has been had been set up by Pankaj Angri Prabhu ji and Janani Vas Prabhu ji. So here he is getting the wonderful mercy of washing his feet. and uh, there is janani vas prabhu ji you can see me there so <laughs> i feel very fortunate to have had his association and here uh, you can see balani tai prabhu serving janani vas prabhu ji and this is our wonderful temple president jay sachinandan prabhu ji conversing with radha jeevan prabhu ji these are other devotees who had arrived with the whole team the whole fundraising team had arrived in portland so they are all here another close up of uh, janani vas prabhu ji and here in the evening so they arrived in the afternoon and the evening was the program at the temple and one wonderful thing that two things they brought two deity paraphernalia these are the feet or the the, the shoes of lord nityananda directly the actual shoes of lord nityananda in the altar so here you see the altar of chaitanya mahaprabhu and lord nityananda's you can see these shoes here kept uh, around here these are the shoes that they brought all the way on the world tour so we are getting we got the opportunity to get the blessings of the feet of lord you can see here they, these are the shoes of lord nityananda on our altar here and uh, they were taken to the temple as well so there is abhishek of the shoes of lord nityananda happening here and this is the uh, what you call shattari 
of, uh, I believe it's Lord Narsingadev Shattari that they brought as well. So all the devotees got a little prasad from, from Jaranivas Prabhuji. So here's a picture of me getting that. And actually that, that's the last slide. So such is the wonderful life of His Grace Pankaj Janvi Prabhuji. So maybe we can all unmute and loudly say Pankaj Janvi Prabhuji ki jai. So let's all unmute and loudly say his grace Pankajanri Prabhu Ji Ki. His grace Pankajanri. Okay, so I'll stop sharing at this point. Thank you. I hope you got to know Pankajanri Prabhu Ji a little bit better through this. And, uh, and uh, you know, like he has touched the lives of millions of Vaishnavas. I hope he has touched your life as well. He certainly has touched my life and I hope and pray that I can make forward progress in my spiritual life by his blessings and his mercy. Anybody would like to share anything at this point? Any reflections, any realizations or anything you want to share, please feel free to unmute and share. Thank you. Oh, so um, I remember you mentioned about the video about uh, Pankajang Prabhu and Jarin Prabhu jumping and dancing as Narsimadev. Um, so I just remembered um, it was uh, one of the Pune Yatras which Chitra Mitra Sai Maharaj took and uh, Hiranagashi Prabhu was actually Gauravani Prabhu. Mm. So uh, I just remembered that. And uh, <clears throat> I, I have um, well, this is forward kind of, but I have a, uh, so to say, a pastime of Pangajangi Prabhu. With permission, can I share something to the devotees? Just, okay, he's just, he just shows his humility. So, uh, this, this is a devotee, his name is Haridas Pati, Das Prabhu, uh, who's been telling this. Um, he had many fond memories with his, his Pangajangi Prabhu, and he was a pure devotee of Krishna with childlike enthusiasm for, for service. And with a beaming smile, conquered the hearts of the hearts of devotees. He had the opportunity to perform Brajamandal Parikrama along with him as a servant in 2011. In the whole journey, he was so humble, he never took any service and gave respect to everyone he met with no expectations in return. Once when he encountered a Brajavasi child with a toffee in his hand, he asked him to chant Hare Krishna. The child did chant and he gave him one toffee. He moved on. A girl came running next to him and she pulled his chadar and said, Baba, give me a toffee. He said the same, say Hare Krishna and you will get a toffee. She said, Jai Shri Radhi. He put his hand in the bag and wanted to take out a toffee, but, but many came out of the bag and spilled on the ground. The girl hurriedly picked it up and with a beaming smile, she replied, this is Vrindavan. If you say Krishna, you don't get a windfall. But if you say Radha, you get more than what you deserve. The next moment, I wanted to see how Pankajangi Prabhu would react to that comment. But alas, I was trying to see him, but I could not locate him. He was paying flat dandavats to the child and begged her to put a petition to Srimati Radhika on his behalf. A Vaishnava par excellence, I wish I could serve him a lifetime. I learned more in Krishna consciousness in that two months than throughout my life. So, this one to share to this devotee uh, shared and... Thank you. Thank you so much for um, beautifully presenting this. Uh, beautiful presenting this as a tribute to his case, Pang Changi Prabhu, uh, as one of the jewels. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Anyone else? So I just remember another thing to uh, the past times, but I don't have, I just, I, I don't have it. I mean, I read it and I remember kind of details with permission. Can I speak that too? Yes. So, so uh, this devotee and, um, and Pangajan Prabhu, they went to, I think, just Kolkata somewhere. And they had to share a room. 
and pankajangi prabhu so prabhu ji was supposed to stay for longer time and he the devotee who was with him was supposed to leave the next day so they sh- the sharing one room and pankajangi and there was a bed and so the devotee said prabhu pankajangi prabhu prabhu ji please use the bed i will sleep on the floor on the mat i have a mat and um prabhu ji said no 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 i i i will like the mat you please sleep on the bed said, of course not the devotee wouldn't <laughs> would let that happen and so pankajangi prabhu kind of tried to trick him this and said, no 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 my back my back problem you know, i can't sleep on soft bed i can i have to sleep on the ground i've been sleeping on, on wood uh, on wooden flooring in the in the in the ashram as well so i'm i'm used to it don't worry about it my back so in that way kind of okay fine if saying so he slept on the bed and then um, and he pankajangi prabhu sat on the ground uh, the next day we got up everything was done and the devotee was leaving and so the devotee wanted to give the mat to pankajangi prabhu prabhu ji you have, you have been you are going to stay for some more days why don't you have this mat and prabhu said no no i have the bed don't worry about it i sleep on the bed so he kind of <laughs> actually tricked uh, the devotee to uh, for that so he's so so humble to, you know and we usually see devotees sometimes you know they get puffed up i've been here for what 30 40 50 years in this moment and blah 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 whatever it's so genuine such genuine humility and and humility is very hard to find this genuine one so yeah thank you so much bro, for giving the opportunity very, very true thank you for sharing those beautiful past times thank you okay anybody else would like to share anything okay if not then we will uh, end here thank you so much for your audience of hearing about shri pankajangri prabhu ji a very dear disciple of shrila prabhupad who must have thoroughly pleased shrila prabhupad so with that we'll end here shrila prabhupad ki jai shrila prabhupad ki jai hari bol thank you prabhu ji